Now, verse 15, mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, uh, I want you also to turn to uh, 1 Timothy, verses number 2, verses number 8. First Timothy 2 and 8, King James Version. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. Verse number 8. That is oh, so you got number 2. Sorry, chapter 2. Two, verse verse two, oh, two to eight. Well, just two and eight. Okay. For kings, verse Timothy two and two. For kings, well, read from uh, one and two. I'm sorry. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, uh -huh. and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness mm -hmm. and honesty. Mm -hmm. These two scriptures are really base, base scriptures again. Session number one and, and lingered until session number two. Prayer is always uh, adequate. Uh, notice in the Chronicles, chapter verse 14, it says, uh, If my people that are called by my name, name shall humble themselves pray. and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven uh -huh. and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now notice it did not give a title that he was talking to only he, he was talking to his people. His people. So that's inclusive of all of his people, right? Like would you consider yourself his people? Mm -hmm. I certainly would. And uh, so the address is given to his people. And, and sometimes we just isolate it. And I know uh, God was talking to Solomon uh, in reference to his kingship, but he was talking to the people at large. If my people, if my people, not only one person, but my people. So I can only reference that. And also, uh, we reference the uh, Timothy because we are required. You hear me say this oftentimes. As believers, we are just required to pray for our nation for a people in, in authority. We we have the, the onus, the pressure, the uh, command is given to the people of God because we are the salt of this earth. And we are the ones that's gonna make the uh, spiritual changes. The, the mundane world cannot do this because they do it without the reference and the uh, power and the authority of God. But we the spiritual church, the called out ones, we have the ability to cause changes in the atmosphere in spiritual sense. So I just brought that to the forefront that uh, let, let us be, keep being reminded that how important prayer is. Prayer, you know, your prayer, in your home prayer, on your job, this constant prayer is required and is requested uh, for not only ourselves, but for our leaders, our national leaders, no matter how crooked they might be, uh, and whoever that, that person, people may be, we are required as a body of believers to do our part, certainly God will do his part, and he's always looking for intercessions, those that are crying out to him and showing a, a sense of concern. If you don't show a sense of concern, it's like, well, if you don't care, why should I care? That type of thing, you know? If you don't care for your own uh, dog, then why should I care for your dog? <laughs> so God is required for the people of God to be uh, forthcoming and proponent of uh, prayer. And then here's something else I want to read to you in reference to prayer. Just a little bit. I'll page out one of my things here. It says, uh, we touch God through prayer, praise, and obedience. Witness and fasting, speaking the word. God in turn reaches out and touches people through us. And I notice God in turn reaches out and touches people through us. And we touch God first through prayer and praise and the obedience and witnessing and fasting. And as a result, God does something he extends that prayer and he goes to work for us 
because we are concerned. See? So always remember, be concerned, just be concerned. And you don't have to know the name or who they are, where they are. Uh, and it's not only for ministers, elders, and deacons. It is the body that's going to be held accountable. Accountable. And uh, the Bible says that he that knows my will and don't do it shall be whipped with many stripes. <laughs> and so it's no fault of our own. It's our own fault. If we do not apply ourselves to the scriptures, we have the ability to see and, and read. And if you can't read and you can't see, you can get it on uh, audible tapes. They, 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 will, they will speak it for us. And so there is no excuse, as Second Romans says, therefore thou art an excusable, excusable old man. So we as a body of believers, I want to always keep the church focused on our purpose because God has called us, amen, and he has sanctified, set apart for his own purpose. And so therefore we are committed to carry forth and to perfect, to hone in those gifts, to hone in those uh, particular callings, not to negate it, not to let it go. And here's something that I think that would help, help excuse me, a lot of us, because sometimes we feel, sometimes, uh, well, I used to feel like that, but until I learned better, a lot of times we feel like everything should work out right for us. When I first got saved, I thought everything should work out. How about you? I'm certain that you figure, well, God, I'm serving you. I'm doing what you asked me to do. And why is so much trauma happen, happening? Why am I, you know, always look like I'm going through these changes and difficult matters and situations? Well, it happens to all of us, uh, even those that are prayerful, those that are smiling all the time, really going through struggles, uh, unannounced struggles, unidentified struggles, but yet, nonetheless, they're going through struggles, and those struggles uh, become paramount uh, in that person's life, and it really becomes something But it's a matter of how we cope with our struggles, how we deal with our struggles. Everybody do not have to know that you're struggling. Uh, and sometimes we just want to let people know because we're a pity party and we want somebody else to join in in our misery. And misery loves company, as the old adage is. So we don't want to uh, fall into those loops, even though you are challenged. The Bible tells us that he reigns on the just as well as the unjust, you know, and vice versa. So, he, you know, so God will bless even those that ain't living right, just to show them that he is still good, that he's God. You know, and sometimes we look at that and we we kind of like pose an insult. Uh, we see the insult in our minds and say, well, God, well, how are they being blessed and whatever? They're not doing what you said. I'm doing what you say to, to do, but yet I'm going through more than them. Matter of fact, they're getting blessed, you know, seemingly above me, above you. But uh, the Bible says this in, in Psalms, fret not yourself, uh, you know, because of evildoers. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. And so we gotta be careful how we gauge ourselves with the uh, ungodly world just because you know God is reigning on the unjust too, but they are gonna be held accountable. And don't forget you and I, we're gonna always be held accountable by God because see, we know better. We know, we know through rough times and good times. We know that we still gotta push, push that wagon. We still have to endure that rainstorm. We still have to go forth, we still have to be strong. And here's, again, another it's, it's, um, page here that says, uh, you win some and you also lose some. And I'm sure this will uh, really bless all of us, I, I'm certain. We all have uh, become a part of this. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Um, every time a team goes to play another team, everybody is, is expected to win. But nobody is expected to lose, which is normal, you know? But it can't be two winners. It has to be only one winner. So, do we ever prepare for losing? <laughs> you know, uh, we are so accustomed. Matter of fact, we and people uh, we become sometimes spoiled, and that's why I believe God has to let us experience some things on the other from the other side to get a feel, to have empathy, or or to em em empathize with uh, the losing side as well, because you don't know what it feels like to to lose if you always won all the time. You know, you don't know what it feels like to hurt if you've never been sick. You see? And so when somebody says, oh, I, I'm hurting, I'm hurting, say, ah, you, you're okay. But uh, had you never been in that place, you would never understand the, the parallel. And uh, my pastor, my previous uh, bishop, who passed away, uh, and my pastor Sites, his mother Sites, the church now, uh, she had had a toothache. <laughs> he told us the story several different times. And he was saying, oh, he went to um, 
Well, the side you ought to have faith, you know. Yeah, you can faith, two faith. And she was, you know, when you have a two faith, you have a two faith, right? Those nerves are very sensitive. Incidentally, those nerves, very sensitive. And so he was down, you know, on her. And then one day, after she got up, you know, two two taken care of, one day he developed a two faith. <laughs> and he could not stand to hear the door shut. <laughs> And he told me, you know, it takes a man to, like, admit. <laughs> he said, now I know what it is. He said, when she would shut the door, he said, oh, my goodness. It looked like the, uh, the pressure from the door, because when there's pressure that, that, that happens when you shut the door, if you notice sometimes you open the door and it closes by itself, there's adjustment in pressure that comes whenever, through ever, however. But you don't see it, but it's there. But it causes the door to sometimes sound, sound like a slam. You know, you meant it just easily, but then the wind got behind it. You know, but that awakened him, or caused him to be awakened to the fact that some things you just have to deal with in life, and everything is not spiritual. And some things just, you know what I'm saying? Because we are born of flesh. You see, the Bible says that which is born of flesh is flesh. You know what flesh is? Our physical body. Huh? Our physical body is designed to withstand and, and, and to do certain things. It rejects certain things. It accepts certain things. And it doesn't like to be under, let's say, rules. You know, flesh like to have his way. And, and, and that's what we always had to fight. They told us in Bible school, they said this in Bible college, they said, they said uh, three components we have to deal with in life. And that's the flesh and, 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 and the devil and the world. The world, the flesh, and the devil. And a lot of times we put a lot of things on the devil, and it's just our hunger from our flesh. And so he takes the credit, and says, you know what, y'all, just give me credit for, you know, give me another award, pin another, uh, pin it on me. And he didn't, uh, wasn't a culprit of that. And God has given us the ability to uh, have dominion over these things, and, and even in our own flesh. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. I ain't trying to preach, but this is what, what we, 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 we need. So we win some and we lose some. We win some and we lose some. And so this says, according to an old baseball cliche, uh, you win some and you also lose some. And some get rained, well, and some get rained out. A wise leader will understand the implications of this for his or her uh, leadership. Every leader would like to win, win them all. But this is impossible. No one wins more than some. It is also uh, important to understand the rainouts. Those people, those people and circumstances for which there will be another day. So, you know, always look for the bright side. It's going to be another day. Program didn't work out like you want. You know, people didn't show up like you want. I've been disappointed I don't know how many times, lost count, so many times. You have been, anybody that's in charge of anything, any program, uh, whether big or small. You have been disappointed, and, uh, and every one time I was so disappointed, I just sat in my office, and I just kind of like sat there, and uh, someone came and kind of tried to consolidate me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just couldn't figure it out. I, mean, I had to learn that sometimes you have to experience losing sometimes, you know, or being, uh, let's say, uh, disappointed sometimes. And so when somebody else gets, gets disappointed, go through a similar uh, situation, you, you can em empathize again. You see what I'm saying? I really know how you feel because I remember that time, you know? And sometimes I revert back to the story that you know, this went on like maybe in my early, early, early 20s. I had come from service, the pastor had put me, uh, he had assigned me to preach every second Sunday. I didn't ask him, but he did, did that because he didn't want to preach the Sunday. Then he had the assistant pastor preach on another Sunday. I didn't ask, I was like, maybe. 22, 23, but, you know, I didn't, you know, because I didn't think I could handle that anyhow, but anyhow, um, so uh, second Sunday came, and it was time to preach, it happened that same day, in the morning that he was on the baptism, and y'all heard me tell this, so, uh, had the baptism at the Delaware River down here, and that's where we used to baptize, and it was like the first service, like 11 o'clock, was 12 o'clock, we had 12, we started at 12 o'clock back then. And uh, so the saints that were there, you know, the Sunday saints, the first service saints, <laughs> they were there. You know what I'm saying? So mind you, I did not ask for this, this, this spot. I really didn't. Really didn't. 
And I said, I was trying to do the best I could do. And so he, he passed pulls up in his vehicle. He never come in because he, he went to get the candidates to take them to get baptized. Only a few candidates. But it looked like the whole church got nosy and wanted to see. And I, if I'm lying, I'm flying. Everybody got up when I was right in the middle of the message and walked down to go to the baptism. And it was only like about four people left. Now this is the main service. This is a main Sunday service. You know how I feel? I said, you know, you know, that their mind was so set on watching, they wanted to get baptized. They wanted to, you know, it was nosy. <laughs> you know? But, you know, it's just like you up here preaching or me preaching. It's a Sunday first service. Everybody get up. I have you to ask you to preach in my, in my stead. And you up here preaching. And I come to baptize. So I'm take them to the river to baptize. And then everybody get up and about four people left. And how would you make me feel? And I felt so bad. It's like, you know, y'all, you call me for this. this I, you, I can't do this. And I really, really went through a little personal, uh, <laughs> what do you want to call it? <laughs> Being an introvert or, or <laughs> what? It's just kind of like, you know, you say, why do you have me up? You call me, God, I can't even. You know, people just walk out on me, you know, you know, and then I heard one, another time I was trying to preach, and uh, one of the uh, old missionaries was talking to somebody else who told me there, he said, yeah, he gave a good dry speech, you know, a dry talk, wasn't even speech, you know, that was about the same age, a little in my prayer, girl, in the 20s, you know, no, is, is that encouraging or discouraging? You know what I'm trying to say? Somebody said to you about you, you know, I have you to speak, or you're speaking, and then the word is whispered around, or whispered to somebody, and that somebody happened to be somebody that was trying to like me, so she told me. So, you know, but, you know, I was bad like her, she was trying to like me. <laughs> but she told me, I guess that was a little bit, you know, informing me, whatever. But, I mean, these kind of, like, things come dark, so, or, and I, you know, maybe they're training tools, and I didn't recognize them as being training tools, you know? Because sometimes we just don't recognize our training moments, you know, and God allows us. And we said, Lord, teach me your ways. Show me, God. And, and he never tells us how he's going to do it, you know? And he never tells us how he's going to do it, who, he, who he's going to use, you know? He, he never tells us. What is his tool? Is, is he going to send you to the potter's house? You see? When you think you're already fixed and be fine. Is he going to send you right back to the potter's house and make you over? And you think, you, you think more of yourself than what you ought to think. You say, God, I, ain't, I don't need all of that fixing over. I'm okay, God. I'm just straight. I'm all straight. Everything's okay. And God's saying, no, you're not okay. Because there's stuff in you that has to be reworked. You know? And you have to hit Bump, bump your head against the wall. You have to hit a, a, a stone bridge or something in order to recognize that you're not where you think you are. You know, and as a young minister, it was very discouraging because, you know, these people were like older than, than me. As a matter of fact, when I was over the elder council, everybody was older than me. You know, I was the youngest at the elder. I was like 25 at the time. They to put me in the elder. I think I was 24. And uh, there was some old folk got upset. <laughs> You know, I didn't ask for it. He, he, you know, what he saw, he saw, but I didn't see nothing. But I was afraid to, to denounce it, to run away from it, because uh, he was, you know, he had these spiritual eyes, and uh, and, you know, and people would get jealous of you just because of, of where you placed, you know? And, but you don't go to war with them because of that fact, right? You still, you, you treat them with love. And one thing I can say, and not because I'm all of that, is that I always treated people right. You know, uh, even if they made me hot or whatever, like that, I just can't keep a long man. I call it a long man. <laughs> I was like that before I got saved. So it was just uh, because I found that when you keep something, harbor something so long, it becomes bitterness. Then it starts to grow into something else. And then it's like Jack and the Beanstalk. You got a big old something going somewhere, and uh, it didn't have to come to that point, but we allow it. So we win some, and we also we lose some. The way that you go off at. So, uh, those people that had rainouts and 
circumstances for which there will be another day. They are neither one nor lost, but will be in the future. They need to be remembered and rescheduled for the most opportune time. And that should not be written off or forgotten. The time will, the time will come for them. A good leader understands this is the plans accordingly. Because the sower couldn't know in advance where to find the best soil. He had to sow, broadcast, the seed in all directions in order to guarantee that the sun would land on good soil. You know, so sometimes, you know, we just gotta, you know, don't matter. You don't know exactly because you don't know the quality of the soil. Uh, especially in those days, they didn't have the technology to determine, to measure. And so, when we do something, we need to broadcast what we're doing. Huh? But we need to, uh, let's say, we need to send out circulars or send the word out with our technology now, with the, with the you know, iPhones and stuff like that. We have technical ways of doing it now. But we need to uh, market, commercialize, however you want to say it. But we need to put it out there because nobody will come to your um, wedding if they were never invited. You know? And nobody would come to your party if you never told them you were having a party. So sometimes we miss the moment because we don't advertise what we're doing. We don't, we don't share what we're doing with others. And then in sharing what we're doing with others, we ought to go beyond the walls of our church. Uh -huh. Because mostly we are community oriented. When I say community oriented, we are people that are just adjusted to community people that we are accustomed to. And we only work with those people that we are accustomed to. Sometimes we work those people to death. You know? And uh, if we keep asking you for $10, the same person, after a while, you are, you're going to run out of money. You're not going to be able to um, help or support. So you have to go beyond your own present scope of community, out of the community, to be successful. When I um, used to, my wife and myself, and some of y'all used, used to go to this conference in, in Maryland for about seven, eight years. And uh, they would have these big pastoral uh, conferences and stuff, and pastors from all over the country would come. Now they had a large church in itself, you know, but it wasn't mo it wasn't most of the church members that supported the conference. It was a combination of other entities, of other people, other people uh, that received mailing, that received information, that um, got the buzzword that they're going to be the conference or whatever like that, and so that brought the people in. And so we had to learn how to spread what we do, you know? Like eating a sandwich. You put the peanut butter, if you like peanut butter, put the peanut butter not on one spot, but you spread it across the whole bread. <laughs> so we want to always spread the news before we, we can uh, consider it a, a winning factor or a lose factor or I did the best that I can and this is the end result. Well, as long as you did the best that you could have done, and this is all what we're asking for even here. God's asking for us to do the same thing. It's just to do your best. If you do your best, I can't fault you for doing your best. Even if you fumble, I can't fault you for trying. You know? And we shouldn't fault one another for trying. Uh, putting the effort, trying to get the job done. And sometimes we meet opposition, and but we still have to go forward. And as long as that person or persons are going forward, trying to get the job done, trying to do the best they can, it, you know, don't. You have to me, you haven't failed. You haven't failed. You only fail when you do not pursue. You only fail when you do not extend yourself to try to make it or uh, fulfill uh, the whole uh, mission the best to your ability. Because a lot of times we work under the scope of our ability. We can do more, but we kind of back off. We want the next person to do, pick up the load. Now, mind you, we're in a different uh, type of atmosphere because People are working, people have jobs, and they have, people have kids, and they come home to the kids. And so there's all these things, that different components that have to be taken under consideration before we jump on one another, if that's the case. I'm not saying you're doing that, before we kind of like, you know, start down on one another. Sometimes people are going through a spell of sickness or something, hard times with their family. It could be a, a guy gamut of things. Uh, so we just don't know. We should always collect or gather, if we're that concerned, gather the correct information. 
before we have an assessment, you know, an assessment what's going on. Gather the, the correct information and weigh the balance. And don't become one-sided. Don't become uh, selfish. Don't become a person that, let's say, have a nepotism, deal with nepotism with like friends and family. It's just, you know, you take the side of your friend and your family. And, and sometimes, you know, you hear that, people just can't pull away from that. It's because, guess what? The flesh. <laughs> I said earlier, the world, the flesh, the devil. <laughs> and so it's our flesh. Sometimes we have to learn how to separate the fleshly part in order to uh, uh, obtain the righteous part or the right part, even if it, it goes against the grain, uh, even of the family, whatever. I mean, no wonder the Bible said father against son, son against daughter, daughter against mother-in-law, etc. If that person goes against the will of God, even though you're connected, uh, re a relative, uh, uh, biologically, if that person goes against what God is saying, you are to sign with God. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Huh? You see, this is what people, lots of people, I mean, uh, you hear it and by being a pastor so, uh, so long, these 27 years, uh, you see it, you hear it, and you watch it, and you watch it. And it'd be like a, a, a pastor friend of mine told me not to, I think it was last year, and uh, it said, um, he was, he was in the church. He was prop, not props on you. He was preaching. He was preaching, and somebody, one of his members that he knew that was in church a long time, uh, got up and wanted to prophesy while he was right in the middle while he was preaching. Y'all feel me? Huh? That's, that that order is incorrect, right? So, <laughs> you know, and he corrected that person right in the service. You know, and then the person got man and because the person had about seven eight or nine ten relatives kids right no yeah right in the service right in the, like the main service you know and so she gets up and get all her family and walk out of the church right in front of everybody you know and then later on the pastor seen her somewhere else and I don't know, I'm trying to recap it. And he asked the young lady, why did she leave the church like that? Because your mama was wrong. <laughs> and, and the reply was, yeah, I know she was wrong, but that's mama. So you did it because that's mama. But that's daddy. You see? But it was incorrect. It was wrong. Why not say, mama, you just, you know, I love you, crazy about you, but you know, you're just wrong. You know? But instead, that person, uh, succumbed to nepotism and just made it even worse. That's dangerous. That's saying, in other words, whatever you say, God, as long as it doesn't go against how I feel. You see? And a lot of times we are in a crucial position because we might end up fighting God or against God without really knowing it, uh, indirectly against Him. Because righteousness, again, is the also nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That would never change. There's certain things are just stable. As I started off with the prayer, we need to always be in prayer. Pray for your kids, pray for your family. Kids running up and down, you know, summer is about uh, to be a part of school. But never take anything for granted. Always pray for your kids, with them, uh, pray for one another. And always be conscious, always con God be conscious of your environment. Because we live in a critical world, a critical time, a critical season, and amongst a critical people. So you will win some, you will lose some. And uh, because the soul couldn't, I uh, said that already, after all the marketing plans and, and our, and made the strategy is set, uh, no one knows what will happen in the marketplace, the end results. You don't know, you don't know the outcome until it happens. All kind of good. Sometimes God, he surprises us. Sometimes, you know, he overshadows us, he opens up doors, he calls the people to move, um, to, to show up or whatever. You're surprised. Wow, I didn't think these folks were going to come. Sometimes, it's somebody that you just know didn't like you. You know in your mind, you might feel personal, because sometimes we personalize too much. We think that they're at me all the time. That, if that's the case, a preacher could not preach anything, because something's going to hit somebody. It has to. His, his word is going out, and it will not come back to him void. And so when he preaches his word, it's going to go out. It's going to hit his word. When it goes out, it's going out to convict. 
It's going out to change lives. It's going out, you know what I'm saying? It's not going out to make, make, make us shout all the time. Sometimes it's going to make us cry. Sometimes it's going to make us hurt. But his word is to perfect us. And, and again, the base scripture was Psalm 138, verse number 8. Uh, he will perfect that thing which concerns me. Uh, so this whole ideal is improvement and for us as a church, as a ministry, uh, to get better, to improve. I know I slack in a lot of areas myself, you know, and I, I ain't ashamed to say it. But uh, I, I try to get it all together. Huh? No? So God just said, okay, now is the time. Now is the time. So he pushed me, and I'm, I'm pushed. Huh? <laughs> he pushed me to make, help get y'all better. First of all, I have to get myself better first of all. Praise God. And some things I delayed for some years, and I know I did. You know? And I said, I just need something. I just need this certain thing to come about. And, uh, and a certain thing came about. And so we have to be conscious. And, and if you led the sensitive of the Spirit, you got to hear what he had to say to the church, incidentally. You know? Don't get up here. Now I'm going back to those who are preaching or call a minister, you don't have to be a minister with license to speak, I, I, I feel, because I believe we all are assigned a certain degree of ministry, and we're supposed to uh, advance in those areas. God will give us the grace to become effective in those areas. You know, the early church, they didn't start out, they was the evangelist Paul, I mean, whatever, whatever. They gained, titles was given to them after the fact, and, you know, but the work they did, the work, the work was paramount. The work was the first order of the day. So the work, let's do the work. Don't, don't worry about the title. You know, I'm with this, I'm with that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Let's do the work. Oh God, you know? People are so, sometimes they're so, they so elusive from what they should be doing as far as commitment. If I'm going to work for God, then I, I, God's going to get the glory out of what you do. Whether you're singing on the choir, or whether you're sweeping the floor, whether you you know picking up trash, whatever you're doing, God gets getting the glory, glory out of that. And I'm doing it as unto the Lord, not as unto men. You know, don't do something to go and complain about it to somebody else. You know, you know I think it's because so and so didn't do it. I didn't do it. You know? I was an elder at the church, the church I come from, and and uh, you hear my stories. I would shovel show snow. I would go there, I'd paint. I would. Uh, clean the bathrooms. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't asked to do it. It just needed to be done. When I saw it had to, you know, needed to be done, then I wasn't done. I did, did my part. You know, we had some men there. I think we had, we didn't have a whole lot of them, but we had, I don't know, yeah, about 15, maybe, something like that, close to it. And, and you know, and, uh, and still at that, everybody wasn't work minded. Some folk we had to run down, some folk was playing high go see. You know? I said high high how you say that? <laughs> you know, you had to find out where they at, you know, some folk make excuses. You know what I'm saying? It just need to be done. And when the pastor wanted something done, you know, I was on board. I said, okay. Okay. You just give me pleasure. We were going to Philly one day, I was on 95, and we were all going to church, we were going to pass to preach, and where he went to preach, we went like Israel, like y'all follow me, as I, uh, we followed him, we just, you know, always, I don't care where he went, we went, we went, we went, and, and one of the elders at the time, was well, even at the time, car had a small, we know, it wasn't a farm car, it broke down, 95, it overheated, it got hot, and he needed some water, for the radiator, where you on 95, where you gonna get water at? You know, so we were like a caravan, so we all pulled aside and waited, and no water. But I, we noticed there was a fenced in area that there was a little lake, <laughs> you know? Huh? And me and my military self, <laughs> I went there, I had on my suit, I went there and climbed the fence. <laughs> and I got a container, and I got some water, and come back and put it in, in, in the gave it to him so he could put it in his car and he used to get back home, you know? And I felt so good by doing that. I cut myself, because it was Bob Wyatt that went over. I cut myself going and getting it for him. You know, see, they didn't, they didn't know I had to do it. I knew they, was in, they were in trouble. The whole caravan stopped. All the saints would stop. You see what I'm saying? But some of the saints, I know they, didn't, they really didn't know what to do. But I knew what to do. When I saw where it was, I said, you know, this is an obstacle. I was trying for this. Huh? 
And so you take what you're trained for and you apply it. You never know under what circumstances. And some people are just good peacemakers. You see? Now, blessed are the peacemakers. Some people are just good peacemakers. Peacemakers. And some people just <laughs> more or less troublemakers. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what David says that in the Psalm 120, verse number 7, he said, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So sometimes people are just, you know, people, their personality is just like on fire. And you're the fire extinguisher. You don't, you, so you can't really get mad with so and so because that's how they are put together. You see? But the common denominator is using compassion, as I stated on, I think it was Sunday, the, the compassion that we show towards one another. Okay, I understand. And being a pastor, you, you, you learn all of this, uh, the, the, the sheep. You, I know y'all personalities. You see? And so I become a referee sometimes. Sometimes I become a judge. Sometimes I become, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> to keep personalities from clashing. You know, sometimes they clash, and then you got to kind of separate. It's like a fighter in the ring. You're getting the clinch. You gotta back off, you know? Because we haven't grown out of our, let's say, immaturity. And it's not to demise anyone, but we haven't developed in that area. But somebody else has. Somebody else have, have been through that incident or place like I was. When people walk out on you, when you're preaching, and, and, and it left you feeling a certain way, and now you know how that feeling is. Now you're so sensitive. And that's why I'm sensitive to a whole lot of folk because of experience and exposure. And I look for the good in all of the people. I always look for the good because I know there's good in you. It's good in the person. Uh, the rougher they are, the that's, that's, you know, that's, that's, I like to ride the rough bulls. <laughs> And I'm not a rough person, it's just like, but that's my anointing, so I understand it's my anointing because that bull is going to come subject because the anointing that he gave me was to deal with that kind of, y'all feel me? No? So he may give you a, a, a different type of anointing to do certain things or ability to do certain things and you have the gifting and you could be a blessing. But I can also carry, and you can carry it a different way and be a, a tell bearer, a, a divide and friendship and siding with different people when you shouldn't side with wrong because like I stated early on if we all stay on track then God will answer the first scripture he read if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray huh, and seek my face and just said turn from the, he had no problem in saying turn from the wicked ways God turn from your wicked ways and then I hear from heaven and then I heal their land you know, all we gotta do is just turn just turn you see? And so leaders got to just turn, preachers got to just turn, uh, congregants just have to just turn, uh, choir members got to just turn and do better. I was a choir director for 16 years straight. I understand choirs. I understand choirs. I had the choir singing all over the place, you know? And, and uh, I understand. I had all kinds of temperaments, all types of personalities, you know? But one time, one, uh, uh, <laughs> I won't call the name, but one time, because they were trying to get a song together, you know, with a quartet song in the choir, I want to sing a quartet song. <laughs> and the person that introduced the, the quartet song was a pre previous quartet singer. So naturally, that's what his environment was most of the time coming up. So the person presented a quartet song. And these, these, now, I'm, I had a variety of age groups. Just like we had choirs, like our choir is. We had diverse age group groups. Well, we have a, had a diverse age group. And that, so, the younger people showed off that woman sound like they was, you know, five blind boys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's a group of you don't know who they were. They was quartet back in the 50s, 50s, 60s, or something Way back there. You see? They were, you know, they song. There's no, there's no, no it's demise on them, but the quartet style. They wanted the choir style. And so, it looked like, and I'm trying to, I don't really know the song, so I couldn't really like teach it because the person that knew it was trying to teach it. And the people were just, because of the youth, they just didn't want to, you know, I guess they were showing rejection. You know how we can show rejection? You know? <laughs> Barely go, you know? I roll our eyes. And so he got upset and he walked out to church and those two doors that spotlight on top of metal doors, they metal doors, they were coated at least to the outside, they metal. 
And he went out to Bessieville, and all of a sudden you heard this, BAM! The door slammed, I mean, shook the walls. You know? And he had a high, very high position. Very high position. You know? The person in the position was next to the pastor. That's the highest position one. And everybody like stood in awe. You see, when you have a certain high position, you should not show, uh, let's say, a uh, lack of self-control. Especially when you're old enough to be the folk father and grandfather. You see? So I have to carry myself a certain way because you don't want to see me acting like I'm 15. You know? You know? I've been, I've been there, so it was, it was different. Matter of fact, I think back. And I said, you know what? That was so silly of me. That was so, I, I couldn't, I don't even want to think like that. See? Because I matured. You matured. When you get better, we, we mature. Well, once we mature, we get better. And then we don't hold grudges. You know, I'm, I'm going to finish this with the, uh, this thing here, but uh, I have so much. But this, this is the continuum, so this is section, session three. But I'm not going to hold you past what I said. I got about five minutes less than, but maybe I got about three and a half minutes. And so you got you to gotta be more conscious more loving. If the church has lost its love, it's lost its fight, its key element or component that will bring the church victory is the love. This is how, this is what Christ did. This is what the, the world couldn't understand. The world couldn't receive. The world was like awed of the fact, how can they love me when, I, when, I, when I'm killing them? How can they still love me? How can, as Stephen said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Why he's being stoned to death? How could, um, how could he turn, how could any human being in their right mind turn around and, and ask God to forgive? We're killing you, and you, you know? And that's the kind of love that the God gives love, the kind of love that God gives, and only God can give. Only God can give, because we can't produce it. When we say we love you, we change it, we don't even do it. You know? You know? I, I have heard so much, so I heard that so many times, like this, you know, okay, just keep it to yourself, <laughs> you know? Because I've seen them running and everything, running and running, oh, I'll do this for you, and I, I want to help you, God sent me, God did that, 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 that. And then some are saying, well, turn around, stab, stab, you don't care where he stab you at, you know? Listen, if I say what I say, I mean what I say, you know? I ain't gonna be your friend now, and next week be your enemy, you know? Uh, I tried it, and I did never, it could never work, because I couldn't stay there. God said, you know what, you gotta be, you gotta treat them right. You gotta do what is right. And I always succumb, I always submit myself, because I know, you know, what goes up must come down. And whatever you sow, you will also reap. So if I keep reaping, reaping the right thing or sowing the right thing, I have to reap the right thing. So, some, so you know, my boat got to come in. You know, it's promise time. My boat, it's all stand. It's promise time. Huh? 